Now about 6,800 very rich people are queuing up with a check of $450,000 to buy a Ford. <laughs> Now we all know the blue oval sits on the bonnet of some very humble cars like the Figo, Icon, EcoSport, but the car I'm about to drive today is no ordinary Ford. It's the iconic Ford GT, which has a reputation of slaying supercars. And I'm gonna find out just how quick it is on track and then the road. It's a nice cozy fit. It is. <laughs> mounted 3.5 liter V6 engine is shoved as far forward as possible and is just inches away from my helmet and again feels race car like with its raw mechanical noise and hissing turbos. But to be honest, the GT's engine note is the biggest disappointment. It's hard to make a V6 sound like a V8, especially if it's turbocharged. Sure, the engine is loud, but the note isn't sweet or refined and is more a cacophony of sounds. What is sweet, though, is the monstrous 647 horsepower and a tidal wave of torque that ensures you won't ever complain about performance. There's no turbo lag to speak of, and the first prod of the throttle pedal slams my helmet back into the seat. The GT is bloody fast and rockets from corner to corner with a ferocity that makes the 0 to 100 time of 2.9 seconds completely believable. Just completely yeah, insane. Yeah, we, we, we literally we had dropped for our last lap. Can't imagine a car can go so quickly on a track. Oh, I'm just blown away. I think my kidneys are somewhere, my brain is somewhere else, all those G-forces. Oh, I don't think I have driven any street legal car so quickly. In fact, this car should be illegal. So that was an amazing five laps on the track. But what's the Ford GT like on the road? I'm gonna get into this car and find out. But before I do that, let's just take a look at it. It looks incredibly fast just standing still. And the beauty of this design is that it leans so much on tradition. Look at these front nostrils which are reminiscent of the 66 GT40, the one that won Le Mans, the shark nose front. But I think the real talking point is the aero of the car. Just look at the way the car tapers towards the rear. And you've got this really cool detail over here where there's air going in here into the intercoolers and there's air being funneled up and going straight into the engine. So not only does this look pretty good, it's got a functional element as well. Now let's move to the rear because again, it really looks awesome. I just love these two huge exhausts just sticking out of the back. And again, just looking at the car from the rear, you can just see it's like a Coke bottle over here, extremely narrow towards the rear. And that engine, the mid-engine, the V6, now Ford said they had to use a V6 because anything bigger wouldn't fit. They wanted to shove the engine right up front as much as possible to get a lower po polar moment of inertia to make it as well balanced as possible. So really a very functional design and it's all about A to B speed. But now I'm gonna jump in and tell you what it's like on normal roads. Butterfly doors, they look fantastic, don't they? So the cabin again is really very functional. It's really very business-like. Uh, the seats, they don't even slide forward because uh, Ford didn't want to have that extra mechanism because it would have compromised uh, the cabin space. Instead, what happens is that the steering wheel comes to you and even the pedals move closer to you. So that's the way drivers can get uh, comfortable. Uh, again, the interior carbon fiber all around really looks uh, the business. But what I really love is the steering wheel 
all controls are on the steering wheel which means you never have to take your hand off the wheel and given the speeds this car is capable of i think that's uh, quite sensible the other thing is that the cabin is really narrow you've got this very slim center console over here so you're very very close to the passenger so if you have a waist of more than 42 better be careful you'll be rubbing stomachs and though this is a supercar they haven't forgotten a few touches of practicality you have a cup holder here you can't sell a car in america without one and in the smartphone age you can't do with usb ports either the ford gt has two of them okay i'm ready to go Toggle the thumb wheel on the steering to sport or normal mode and the GT suddenly rises 50 millimeters, preparing itself for the world outside a racetrack. But even raised to its maximum ride height, the GT still feels very hunkered down. Ford has really nailed it with the suspension. I mean, it's hard to believe how compliant this is. I mean, it's as much at home on the road as well as the track. Even small dabs on the throttle pin you back and you get accustomed to the brutal acceleration. But it's not the power but the chassis and aerodynamics which are the true heroes of the show. The hydraulic steering has a seminal feel. The steering is just unbelievable. You've got that old school hydraulic feel. It's quick off center. It's sharp. It's absolutely precise. You can place this car exactly where you want it to go. It's the way the steering weights up progressively that encourages you to lean deeper into corners. But I'm still just scratching the surface of the GT's dynamic capabilities. I mean, it just dives deeper and deeper into corners. You get so much confidence with every kilometer. The fluency with which it changes direction lets you build up a joyful rhythm that makes driving the GT an absolute delight. Over undulations, off camber bits and the odd rough patch, the GT is utterly stable and it is very predictable for a mid-engine car. The ride is pretty impressive too and in comfort mode feels surprisingly pliant. What an unbelievable day it's been and I can tell you I don't think I've driven a car that is so honed for speed like this one. The handling is just absolutely brilliant, be it on the track, be it on the roads. And you really get the feeling that this car has been designed to go really fast A to B. It is really a weapon for speed. And what really makes it special is that what Ford have really done with this. This car has a lot of future tech, but at the same time, it leans heavily on tradition. It's racing tradition. You can see that in the looks and you can just see that in the character of the car. Now this car may not have the flamboyance of the Italians and I think even the engine note of the V6, well, that really doesn't sing the way I would like it to. But otherwise, this car is at a completely different level. And just to end on a bit of a sad note, this car will not be made in right-hand drive, which means even if you can afford it, you really can't have it in India. So, dream on.